Hello world! Hello everyone de la Cruz! Welcome to Everyone Can Code. One or one de la Cruz symbolizes every Filipino. Everyone Can Code or ECC is an online campaign that aims to build a community of coders. ECC believes that every Filipino, regardless of age, gender, and status, can be creative and can learn how to code. We would like to communicate that coding is an essential skill in this age and time. Coding is the language of technology and promotes critical thinking and problem solving. Teaching coding is about teaching thinking. ECC aims to build a community that equips every Filipino with coding skills. With ECC, we would like to move away from the mentality that coding is just for geeks, technical, and smart individuals. And we wish to remove the intimidation in coding. With innovation plus localization, we hope that every student, our young generation, and every Filipino can learn how to code for the future of our digital economy and nation building. We also look forward for our graduates to have an option to not just be an employee, but become a digital entrepreneur and start up their own business. PMC Business Systems Inc. or PBSI offers a step-by-step -step ladderized training program for coding. As a technology training center, we have Apple certified trainers who can run Apple's curriculum for Swift Programming SDK and iOS app development. Join us every Monday at 2 p.m. for our online free coding webinar. There will be t-shirts for grab to our winners to simply follow the instructions of our training. And if you have comments or questions, you can post it on our comment section. Hello everyone, welcome to our second session of creating an interactive website with JavaScript. So last session, we've talked about the basics of JavaScript. And today, we're going to apply yung mga natutunan natin. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is to download first yung HTML file na gagamitin natin. Okay, so let's head over to this link. Okay, it's github.com slash lindoncortez slash ecc dash web okay it will redirect you to my github repository kung, nand kung saan nandun yung uh, initial file or yung template na gagamitin natin okay now once na nagload na yung page no we're going to download this as a zip file so click this code button and then click download zip right so, let's click this, okay, and then, uh, let's extract this, no, papunta sa desktop natin. So, we're going to move this to our desktop para mas madali siyang makita. And then, um, we're going to extract this, just double-click lang yung zip file, then delete na natin siya. Alright, so we have our... Uh, folder directory okay na may laman ng mga html file uh, css file and some image assets okay All right so let's open this dun sa editor or to sa uh, text editor na gagamitin natin okay so, uh, let's open the atom editor And then let's um, try to drag itong folder papunta dito. Yan, para mag-open yung ating um, file or directory sa text editor na gagamitin natin. Pwede nyo siya i-drag and drop lang. Okay? So let's uh, check yung mga file na nasa loob. So we have the assets folder. Okay? And inside the assets folder, meron tayo image folder. And nandun sa loob yung mga pictures or image na gagamitin natin no? para dun sa website na i-create natin. Okay? 
And then we have the index.html. So, ito yung uh, HTML file natin. So, papasin nyo, meron na tong code. Okay? So, meron siya initial code. Okay? We're not going to uh, create or build the website from scratch. No? Uh, it will take time ba? So, uh, nag-create na ako ng initial template. Okay? Kung nasaan meron na siyang mga uh, header, meron siyang title, meron siyang navbar. Okay? Pero, uh, wala pa siyang interaction or wala pa siyang JavaScript code. So, ang goal natin today is to add JavaScript code to this uh, website, no? Para magkaroon ng interaction between doon sa mga HTML elements. Right? So, ito yung laman ng HTML file natin. Okay? And then, uh, we have yung <coughs> CSS. Okay? Yung CSS file. Okay, na gagamitin natin. Right? So, ang gawin natin is, let's try to preview this HTML file. <coughs> and then, let's check. Right? So, yung initial template natin, ito yung look ng ating website. So, meron tayong navbar, kung nasan yung, andun yung brand name natin, everyone store. <coughs> The meta icon for uh, add to cart. Then we have uh, products listing. So meron tayong mga products na naka uh, lagay sa mga sa card. Okay? And then meron tayong picture. So dito natin ginamit yung mga uh, image, yung mga assets. Then meron tayong name of the product and some placeholder, text placeholder. Basically, ito yung description natin ng mga product. Then, <clears throat> and then we have price, right? And then we have a button na add to cart. Okay? And also, we have search bar. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin is we're going to add JavaScript code. Okay? First is, ang gagawin natin is um, itong products listing. So, we're going to add products no, from a uh, an object or an array of objects. Okay? So, and then, we're going to talk about JSON or JavaScript Object Notation. Okay? And then, we're going to uh, add JavaScript code dito sa button na to, add to cart, so that if we click this uh, button, okay, dapat mag-disable siya and lalabas yung word na ah uh, magdi-disable yung button. Okay? So meaning na add to cart mo na itong product. Okay? So yun yung uh, second na gagawin natin dito sa website and then we're going to implement search. Okay? So that kapag nag-search tayo ng pangalan ng product, okay, lalabas dito yung product lang na sinearch natin. Okay? So yun yung um main goal natin for this session to, to add javascript code okay or to add interaction dito sa website na to okay so right yan uh, papansin nyo uh, responsive na yung uh, website natin okay so for this one i use the bootstrap css library okay which enables uh, the page not to be responsive Okay? Using yung mga bootstrap classes. Okay? So, we're not going to talk about bootstrap. No? Um, you can check their website, no? bootstrap.com, no? to learn how we, how we can use yung mga bootstrap CSS components. Okay? So, this is responsive na. So, that if binayo mo to uh, using a smartphone or mobile phone, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, i- I-ano nyo na yan, i-fix nyo na yung mga elements, XML elements para so right now, uh, maging natin, three, uh, compatible uh, siya dun sa natin, no? view. Okay. No, yung naka-hard code to dito sa HTML file natin. Okay. So, papasin nyo, meron tayong 1, 2, 3. So, we have this 3 um, card. Okay. So, basically, this is, yan. So, yung itong naka-highlight na to, 
Okay. Uh, we uh, I use yung bootstrap card which enables us no to design it like this. So para siya nakalagay sa isang card. Okay? So itong uh, isang card na to no. So dito naka hard code yung name ng product, description, price at saka yung button. Okay? So you can do it like this no but what if marami ka ng products? So let's say 50 products, no? 20 products. Okay? Uh, medyo mahirap siya i eh? hard code sa HTML file. And uh, lalaki yung, uh, uh, medyo mahaba yung uh, HTML file natin. Mahirap nang hanapin. Okay? Kung nasaan yung uh, product na yun. Okay? Kung may gusto tayong baguhin, okay, mahirap siyang hanapin kasi naka-hard code siya doon sa HTML file natin. So, what we can do is we can create an object. Okay? So, what is an object? An object is a collection of properties. Okay? So, and a property is an association between a key and a value. So, ito yung tawag natin na key value pairs. Now, the concept of objects in JavaScript can be understood with uh, real-life tangible objects. So, for example, no, uh, we have a cup. So, a cup is an object. And then, meron siyang mga properties. So, ano yung mga properties niya? Meron siyang color, design, weight, and ano yung material na ginamit sa kanya. So, yun yung mga properties niya. So, the same way, okay, JavaScript objects can have properties which define their characteristics. Okay? So, for this one, okay, we're going to create an object, okay, for this products. So, uh, since, kunwari, marami tayong, uh, let's say we have three no, products, we're going to, three objects, we're going to create an array of objects na mayroong mga properties. Okay? So, let's check yung directory natin. Then, ang gagawin natin is we're going to add uh, a new file. Then, Pwede natin tong rename as index.js. So, we're going to create a JavaScript file. Okay, and then, uh, we'll call it index.js. Okay. Yan. So, dito natin lalagay yung JavaScript code natin. Now, going back dun sa index.html natin. No? Now, to make sure na uh, ma-load niya yung javascript file is we're going to add uh, script tag. Okay. Yan. So, we can delete this uh, character set. So, we're going to put here yung path papunta dun sa javascript file. Since the index.html is nasa same directory. Okay nung index.js so pwede natin ilagay dito is index.js lang so ito yung path papunta dun sa uh, javascript file natin okay right yan so next is oops wala okay index.js so, i-load ulit natin yung preview. Yan. Okay. Right. Now, going back dun sa index.js. Okay. So, ang first thing na ilalagay natin dito is uh, yung mga object. Okay. Each product, no, i-convert natin to a JavaScript object. Okay. But, no, para mas madali, okay, we're going to create an array of objects. So, uh, how do we create an array no, in JavaScript? So, using this um, square brackets. And then, inside these square brackets, no, okay, we're going to use a curly brace bracket. Okay? So, this one, uh, ito yung gagamitin natin na na tag no para ma-determine ni JavaScript na di, ang nasa loob nito is an object okay so for each product 
Okay, maglalagay tayo ng property. So, let's start with a name. Okay, name. And then, let's say, meron tayong price. Meron tayong price, property price. And then, meron tayong description. And yung picture. So, we're going to use yung source. Okay? Yan. Okay. So, yung first product natin, okay, yung name niya is Apple Watch. Apple Watch. And then yung price, it's $15,990. Okay? And then the description is um, pwede kayo maglagay ng kahit ano dyan. Ito. So, nalagyan natin siya ng counting description. Prices. Because Okay. And then, yung, um, ang ilalagay natin dito is yung uh, path na papunta dun sa picture. Since yung mga image assets natin is nasa loob ng assets folder and image folder. So, yung gagawin natin dito is uh, we're going to put this assets folder and then image. Then, inside this image is yung name ng mismong file ng picture. So, kailangan uh, exact uh, name siya. Okay? So, para kapag na-load siya dun sa ating uh, HTML file, no? okay? um, i-load na yung tamang picture. So, kapag, mali, kapag meron kang uh, mali dyan sa path ng assets mo, okay, hindi na i-load yan. So, ang gawin natin is, meron tayong first uh, object. We're going to copy na lang this one. And then, paste it two times. Okay. Then, yung second product natin is AirPods. Then, the price is 9490 And then, yung description Yan. So, pwede kayo maglagay muna ng kahit anong description. Yeah. Imagine. Okay, so ang source, <coughs> pangalan ng file is airpods underscore zero one and that png. Okay, and then dun sa last is macbook 71990. Then we're going to add some description here here. First, chip design okay, for Mac. Okay. And then, yung uh, image na gagamitin natin is MacBook here zero one that PNG, right? So uh, in dito sa HTML file no, pwede natin i-delete itong mga yan. Itong mga uh, itong card na to, itong mga nilagay natin na uh, div image tag, okay, h h five tag, okay. So, pwede natin siya i-delete. Mamaya, gagamitin natin itong mga uh, HTML element na to dun sa JavaScript. Okay? So, okay. 
So, pwede natin ito i-delete. Yan. So, kapag, yan. So, nakita nyo, wala na tayong product sa HTML file. Okay. So, ang gagawin natin is, nalagyan din siya ng comment. Okay. Products will be listed here. Okay. So, mamaya sa JavaScript code, okay, uh, lalagay natin ng logic yung JavaScript natin so that uh, i-load niya, okay, yung HTML element, okay, and then ilalagay niya yung mga object, okay, mga products dito sa loob ng uh, ano natin, HTML file. Okay? So, using JavaScript code. So, going back dun sa index.js. Okay? Alright. So, meron tayong array of objects. So, we're going to store this, okay, into a products constant. Okay? Yan. So, uh, Product constant. So, okay, para ano natin siya. Okay. And then, meron tayong uh, array of objects. Okay. So, let's check. Ayan. So, after that, no? Ang gagawin natin is, uh, i-iterate natin. Okay. Since meron na tayong array of objects, naka-store na siya dun sa products na constant na variables. Okay? I-iterate natin yung mga objects na yun, and then we're going to display that. Okay? Uh, one by one. Okay? So, the next thing that uh, we will do okay, is to uh, we're going to access, no? We're going to access yung HTML file natin. And then, nahanapin natin, no, saan doon sa HTML okay, file natin ilalagay yung um, JavaScript code o itong mga object na to. Okay? So, let's say document that query selector. Okay? Then, we're going to access yung ID, okay, HTML element na may ID na card diff. Okay? Okay. So, dun sa HTML file, no, hanapin natin, hanapin ngayon yung JavaScript. Okay. So, nasaan yung HTML element na yon na merong ID na card div? So, papasin nyo, wala dito. Okay. But, meron tayong hint. So, since the products will be listed here inside this div element na to. Okay. Ilalagay natin. Okay. Maglalagay tayong ID here. Then, we're going to name it card div. Okay? So, meaning, i-access ni JavaScript code itong card div element na to. So, that kapag nag-iterate siya ng mga, ng mga products natin, okay, ilalagay niya dito sa loob ng card div element. Okay? Or itong div element. Right? So, we're going to store this. No? We're going to store this into a variable. Or my called my product. So, you can name it. Okay? Kahit anong gusto nyo ipangalan sa variable. Right? Next is, so, uh, so, na-select na natin yung HTML element na yan. So, afterwards, no, uh, we're going to use a for loop. Okay? So, we're going to use a for loop, no, to iterate, okay, yung mga objects, or yung mga products, then we're going to display the, uh, them, yung mga name, price, description, no? One by one, using a for loop. Okay? So, we're going to use a for loop, okay? And then, inside this for loop code, no matter, uh, mag-declare tayo ng uh, variable called i. Then, we're going to set an initial value of this i to zero. Okay? Uh, Saan natin gagamitin yung i? Later, malalaman nyo kung saan natin magagamitin yung variable na kinikate natin. Okay? So, for var, i is equals to 0. And then, mag-add tayo ng condition. Uh, inside this for loop, no, ito yung usually na common syntax na ginagamit natin no, to iterate. No? 
uh, yung isang array, isang array of objects. So, for var i is equal to 0, then we're going to add the condition if i is less than the products. So, itong products na to is ito yung name ng variables natin sa taas. So, hinuhold niya yung mga uh, objects, yung mga products. If i is less than the products dot length, okay, okay product dot length, okay, so itong products dot length is binibilang niya, okay, no, ilan yung array natin, okay, Ar ilan yung array of objects natin. So since na meron tayong tatlo dyan, no, okay, ang, ang value nitong products dot length is 3. So if i is less than 3, okay, gagawin natin is we're going to add 1 okay dun sa i na variable natin okay so for ito yung uh, nasa loob ng for loop natin and then inside this okay mag tayo ng curly brace bracket and then yung code so for every loop okay as long as nami-meet niya tong condition na to okay Okay, uh, i-run ni JavaScript code yung nasa loob na code natin. Okay? Right. So, inside this for loop, no, we're going to uh, create a div element. And then we're going to store that okay, into a variable called div item. Okay? Then, we're going to use document that create element. Okay. And then div. Right. <coughs> so, makikreate tayo ng, uh, so for every loop, no, makikreate si JavaScript code ng div element. Okay. I-store niya, i-store niya to sa div item variable. And then, we're going to use this variable, nalagay natin siya ng attribute. So, set attribute, okay, nalagay natin siya ng class, and then, ang value ng class na yun is call dash md4, okay, mb4. Now, itong uh, class na to, itong value ng class na to is uh, ano, came from bootstrap classes. Okay? So, dapat kung ano yung nilagay ko dito na class name, eh, yun din nilalagay nyo sa code nyo. Okay, unless you want it not to, you want it your own, you want it to use your own design, okay? Pwede rin naman. So, meron na, nilagay natin, yung nag-create tayo ng div element, nilagay natin siya ng class, okay? Class name, then the value. Basically, this is for styling, yung, yung uh, card natin. And then, we're going to uh, add, okay, inner.html. So, dito na natin inalagay yung uh, HTML file, or HTML code. Okay? So, basically, gagayahin lang natin yung structure ng HTML code kanina, ng initial file natin. So, gagawin natin is, we're going to use backtick. Why? Kasi kagamit tayo natin yung tawag na template literals. Okay? Si JavaScript code, pwede tayong mag-embed ng uh, expression or ng function, JavaScript function, JavaScript expression dun sa mga template or dun sa mga string literals natin. Okay? Using template literal. Okay? So, to do that, no? in order for us to, to do that, no? we're going to use itong backtick and then inside this backtick, no? yung laman o yung HTML code natin. So, we're going to start with the div. Okay? Then, lalagyan natin siya ng class na card. And then, h100 card-border. Okay? And then, lalagyan natin siya ng ID. So, itong ID na to, okay, uh, ito yung magdetermine no, nung uh, mag-identify dun sa card na yun. Okay, ang gagawin natin is we're going to embed a JavaScript code inside our 
HTML code. Okay? Since gumamit tayo ng backtick, no, pwede natin gamitin yung template literals. So, usually, um, placeholder for that is uh, starts with the dollar sign. And then, we're going to use curly brace bracket. Okay? So, kapag nakita to ni JavaScript, itong syntax na to, meaning, meron tayong JavaScript expression or code. Okay? Ang gagawin niya is, uh, babasahin niya itong code muna, okay, bago niya i-display itong uh, HTML code. Okay? So, uh, ilalagay natin dito yung name ng products as an ID. Bakit? Kasi later, pag uh, gumawa tayo ng search function, okay, isa-search natin siya, okay, yung uh, each card, okay, each card ng mga products natin using itong ID. Okay? So, we're going to uh, put products, okay? So, ito yung name ng ating uh, variables na products. Okay? Now, since na naglulook tayo, nilulook natin, okay? So, for every uh, array or for every object na meron yung products, okay? We're going to access each array, okay, using the i. Okay? So, itong i na to, is ang value nito, is kung ano yung value ng i natin dito. Okay? So, ang initial value ng i natin is 0. So, meaning, sa unang run ng loop, ang initial value nito is 0. Remember, ang array, no, if you want to access yung element ng array, Okay, you have to access yung index na. Okay? Since an array will start always at index 0. So, yung first loop natin, ang ina-access natin na product is yung index 0. So, ano ba yung nasa index 0 natin? Yung Apple Watch. Okay? So, now instead of, uh, since ayaw natin i-repeat yung mga code natin, no? ay naman natin na, uh, every loop, lalagyan natin siya, 0, 1, 2, 3, no, hindi. Gagawin natin is, okay, uh, we're going to use yung i, yung variable na kinaig natin kanina. Okay? Since every loop, na once na nag, uh, once na natapos yung isang loop, okay, as long as na mimit pa na itong condition na to, which is, yung value ng i, okay, is mababa pa dun sa uh, number of array. Okay, number of products natin. Since uh, 0 is less than 3, true pa siya, gagawin niya is i-run niya yung nasa loob ng code and then mag-add siya ng 1 dun sa value ng i. So, yung first loop, 0 pa lang yan. The moment na i-run na yung first loop, okay, since namimit pa niya yung condition, ang value na ng i natin sa sunod na loop is magiging 1. And then, since namimit pa niya yung condition dito, Okay, i-run nyo ulit yung code. And then, the next uh, value na i natin is 2. So, every loop, no, ginagamit ni JavaScript code itong i na to. Okay, para ma-access natin yung nasa, uh, yung, mga in, yung mga nasa array natin. Okay? So, yan. As long as yung i natin is not equals to 3 pa, okay, mag-loop lang yung code natin. So, we're going to access yung uh, products natin. And then, we're going to access yung properties. Now, to access the properties, we're going to use the dot notation method. Okay? Dot name. Right? So, kung ano man yung name, kung nasa ang index tayo ng array, okay? okay? Ilalagay niya dito yung name ng product. Okay? And then, after this is, inside this div element, we're going to use the image tag. Okay? Yung image tag, no? Nag-accept siya ng path. Okay? Papunta dun sa assets. So, since na nilagay na natin yung, okay? Yung assets o yung path, no? Nung, nung picture. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin is, we're going to use template literal solid. So, we're going to, uh, let's say, yan, and then, 
products i then that notation that src okay and then yeah close natin yung image tag right after the image no mag-add tayo ng div element here just meron siyang class na card body so dito na dito natin ilalagay yung name description tsaka price okay Nagyan natin muna ng mga closing tag para hindi natin makalimutan later. Yan. So, let's use uh, header 5 para dun sa card title natin. Card title. Okay. And then, we're going to access ulit the products. I dot title. Uh, sorry, name pala. Name. Name. And then, uh, I'm going to use P tag pa, uh, or a uh, uh, paragraph tag. Card dash text. Okay. Then, closing. Para hindi natin makalimutan later. And then, we're going to access ulit. Products. That description. Okay. And then, um, after this is, gamit tayo ng header 6 element. Tapos, uh, lalagyan natin dito yung price. Okay. So, products i that price. Okay. And then, we're going to add a button sa baba. With the type of button. And then, class is btn. And the primary FP2. Okay. Then close tag for the button. Then we're going to add add to cart. Para yun yung lalabas na text sa button natin. Okay. Then let's end this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so make sure to save that. Now, next, okay, after this, now that inner HTML code na, nagawin natin is we're going to access itong my products. Okay, and then ia append natin yung uh, div item natin. Itong div item, ia append natin ito, okay, dito sa card div na to, which is yung ating ito. So, pag in-append natin, okay, lalabas, uh, hindi mo lalabas, I mean, um, ipapasok ni JavaScript code yung mga HTML code sa loob nitong div element na to. Okay? Since nandun yung ID natin na card div. Okay? So, append child, we're going to use append child, and then yung div item. So, ito yung i-append natin. Okay, so let's try to save this. Right. So, nandun yung card natin, pero yung picture is broken. Okay. So, yung gagawin natin is, we're going to preview this HTML file, HTML file sa browser. Okay. Okay. Close na natin yung preview. And then, dun sa uh, JavaScript, uh, ano natin, o mga objects natin of products, no? Um, yung path natin, kaya siya yung image is hindi, like, or broken image yung lumalabas. Okay? Meron tayong mali dun sa path. Ang gagawin natin is, we're going to, okay, delete yung uh, symbol na yon Okay? 
Then we're going, dapat ganito na yung uh, path papunta dun sa pictures or dun sa image or dun sa assets. Okay? And then, dun sa browser, okay, ilo-load natin yung HTML file. Okay? Yan. So, dapat, ang nangyari kasi kanina, yan. So, for example, magkain natin dyan. So, explain natin ano yung nangyari kanina. So, broken siya. Why? So, pag inspect natin yung picture, no? Yung path papunta dun sa file, okay, is hindi niya mahanap kasi mali yung directory or mali yung uh, location. So, nababasa ni browser na yung file is nandito. Pero walang gantong folder. Hindi nag exist Yung folder na yan, yung maraming uh, slash. Okay? So, uh, hindi siya nag exist Kaya hindi makita ni, ni browser, okay? Or ni HTML yung file na yan. So, ang gagawin natin, gagawin lang dyan to solve that is to delete itong nasa unahan. Okay? Save. And then, let's refresh. Yan. So, yan. So, may kita nyo, na-detect niya na. Okay? Kung nasaan yung uh, file na yon So, tama na yung file path. Okay? So, dapat pag in-refresh yung page nyo, so, i-review na natin siya sa browser. Okay? So, review natin siya sa browser para uh, mas full yung view. Okay? Mas makita natin ng maganda yung view ng ating website. Okay? So, yan. So, successful naman ang ating um, pag-add ng JavaScript code. So, ginawa natin is, okay, nilagay natin uh, yung mga products into an array of objects or sa object. Okay? Then, uh, in-store natin siya sa isang variable. Okay? And then, in-iterate natin Okay, yung array na yon, yung array of objects na yon. Okay, then in-access natin yung mga properties of each uh, products, okay, using this template literals and the dot notation. Okay, products.name, products.description, uh, price, and then yung uh, file path papunta dun sa picture or sa images. And then in-append natin siya pabalik dun sa HTML file. So, dito natin siya in-append. Okay, sa loob na itong div element na to. Okay? So, ang result is ito. So, dapat lalabas na yung pictures, name, description. So, ito yung description na inad natin. Price. And then, yung button. Okay? So, before we proceed dun sa button, no? Yung price natin is hindi... Uh, uh, hindi Yes, readable siya, pero hindi siya appropriate na uh, ma-determine o hindi siya na-determine as price no, kapag chinect siya ng isang user. Kasi wala siyang kama. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, no, para mas madali siyang basahin ng user kapag binasa nila yung price. Okay? Dun sa code natin. Okay. Okay, so yung price dito. So, we're going to add a .local string method. So, gina anong ginagawa ng to local string method? So, it returns a string representing the object. So, this, me this method is meant to be overwritten by derived objects for local specific purposes. Okay? So, nalagay natin siya to local string. And then, nalagay natin siya ng value na 3. Okay? So, pag sinave natin yan, and then, ni-refresh natin. Yan. So, may kita nyo. Okay? So, every... Uh, three digits na no? nagkakaroon tayo ng kama. So, para mas madaling basahin yung price sa website natin. Okay? Now, yung next na uh, i-code natin or lalagyan natin ng logic is yung button natin. Okay? So, yung gagawin natin dito is every time na i-click natin siya, okay, dapat mo disable siya. Okay? And then, mapapalitan yung text niya to added. So that, uh, meron tayong indicator na na-add na natin siya sa cart natin. O itong product na to, okay, is na-add na natin. So, dun sa JavaScript code natin, o. Oh. Ayan. Okay. So, gagawin natin is, we're going to um, access muna. Okay. 
So, since every card, okay, yung button natin is nandun sa card. Okay? But, since yung button natin is nasa nakaloop, no? So, depende kung ilang products yung in-iterate. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin is we're going to select all. Okay? Query selector all. Okay? All element na merong class name na BTNMB. Okay? So, i-access natin lahat yon Kasi, uh, since hindi natin madedetermine kung ilang products yung nilagay natin, okay, we're going to access all elements na merong dash BTN, uh, dot BTN dash MD element. So, ito yan. No? Ito, ito yung class name na yan. Okay? So, i-access natin lahat ng button, no? every instances ng button. And then, we're going to access ilan ba yung element, ay, yung button na yon Okay? Then, store natin siya. Okay, using var buttons is equals to document that query selector all that length. So, ang value nito is kung ilan yung button na meron sa uh, website natin. Okay? And, and then, magpo-for loop ulit tayo. So, for var i is equals to 0. If i is less than the length okay, of the button, So, buttons that length. Gawin natin is i plus plus. And then, yung code. So, for every loop, okay, tawagin natin yung all. Ah, para mas maganda is yan. That length. So, dito natin nalagay yung dot length. Parang ginawa natin kanina. Okay? And then, i-access natin yung buttons. Okay? I. Right? Then, lalagay natin siya ng add event listener. Okay? So, ano itong add event listener na to? So, itong add event listener, listener is lalagay natin ng event yung mga button natin. Okay, ah, lalagyan natin ng event listener, yung mga button. So that kapag kinilik natin siya, okay, pinress natin yung button, okay, uh, once na na-determine ni JavaScript, okay, na kinilik ng user itong button na to, pwede tayo magbigay ng function. Okay? So itong add event listener method, no? So ano bang uh, type of event? So click, since kiniklik naman natin yung button sa website, so, yung first parameter natin dyan is type of event. And then, yung function. Okay? Na, for every click, ano yung mangyayari? So, ang gagawin natin is this.innerHTML. Okay? So, yung text ng button na to is papalitan natin ng added. Okay? So, yung add to cart magiging added once na kinilik natin siya. And then, also, we're going to um, add a class. Okay? Class name called disabled. Right? So, nalagyan ito siya na uh, dapat naka-string pa. Oops. Disabled. Right? So, yung button na yun, magkakaroon siya ng uh, class property na disabled. So, kapag kinlik natin siya, yung text magiging added, and then madi-disabled yung button. Okay? So, yan. So, let's check no, sa website natin. Okay? Oops. There. So, refresh natin siya. Now, so, check natin, no? Um, yes. So, check natin. Inspect muna natin yung button. Okay. So, mapapansin nyo yung class name niya. Okay? So, ito pa lang yung mga class name. So, kapag kinulit natin siya, okay? Right. So, dito muna tayo di sa web, di sa mismong page, no? Ano napansin nyo? Na-disabled yung button. So, hindi natin siya makiklik ulit. Okay? Naka-gray out na siya. And then, yung text is napalitan ng added. 
Now, kapag inspect natin to, okay, yung disabled na na class, no, na add siya dun sa class name or sa class list nung button na to. Okay? So, inspect ulit natin to. Since ito is hindi pa nakaklik, no? Yan. So, wala pa siyang disabled. So, dun sa class list. Kapag kinilik natin siya, yan. So, dapat may disable siya and yung text niya is mapapalitan ng added. Okay? So, yan. So, yun yung add uh, to cart button natin. So, inalagyan natin siya ng logic na kapag kinilik natin yung button na yun, okay, madi-disable siya and mapapalitan siya ng added. Okay? So, next is yung search naman natin. So, refresh natin to. So, yung search. Okay? So, sa search, ang gagawin natin is if filter natin. Okay? So, meron tayong mga uh, list of products, di ba? And then, doon sa products, no? Yung ID nung each product natin, nung card. So, papansin natin. Yan. Ito, itong ID. So, remember, no? Ginamit natin yung name. Okay? Ginamit natin yung name nung product as ID nitong buong card na to. So, that kapag filter natin siya, okay, pag sinurge natin yung name ng product, ang ipapakita lang niya na card dito is yung card ng product na uh, match dun sa sinurge natin. Okay? So, kay JavaScript code, okay, so, ang gagawin natin is, yan, we're going to create a function. So, function, going to name is as filter product. So, pwede rin search products. Uh, mas maganda is filter products kasi uh, pinifilter natin. So, ito yung function na yan. So, filter products. Okay, hindi nalagyan that siya ng E. Basically, uh, this one is for the event. Okay, later on kasi, so, tiba nag tayo ng function, no? Sa so, dulo, okay, ang gagawin natin is nalagyan natin siya ng logic na prevent.default. So, ang gagawin nito is Uh, kapag ang button kasi is kinlik usually sa isang website, no, magsasubmit siya ng uh, post request. Okay? Kung baga may sinasubmit na sinisend tayong mga data. Okay? And since ang goal lang naman natin for this session no, is to uh, search lang. Okay? Is to search for uh, or filter. Okay? filter yung mga products natin. So we're going to prevent this um, function no, from sending a date or uh, from sending yung data o yung input na nilagay natin. Okay? Since uh, yung search bar na gagamitin natin is actually a form. Okay? So once na click natin yung button, magsasubmit siya. But since wala naman tayong sinisend no, na na data papuntang web server sa isang server okay uh, if, ang gagawin natin is ilalagay natin siya ng prevent default okay or event that prevent default okay so so yan so lalagyan lang natin siya ng parameter na event or e for short no forgot now inside this function is we're going to create a variable so Uh, ilan yung kikreate natin? Dalawa. Okay? Var input value and cards. Okay? So, ano papansin nyo? Nag-create ako ng variable pero hindi ko sila binigyan ng value. So, kay JavaScript pwede siya. Okay? So, uh, yung value nito is null pa. So, wala pa siyang laman. Okay? So, kaya pwede natin siyang I, pwede tayo mag-declare ng variable na using this uh, method, no? Or using this, uh, or yung gantong way, no? Kama lang and then walang value. So, after natin mag-declare ng uh, variable, okay, gagawin natin is we're going to um, select, no? We're going to select yung input okay i-access natin yung input na element 
So, sa HTML, nasan ba yung input na element na yun? So, yung search uh, bar natin, okay? So, ito yan. So, yan. Oops. Yan. So, ito yung element. So, meron tayong uh, input tag here. Yan. So, ito yung input element na ina-access natin. Okay? So, going back to sa JS. So, ang kailangan natin sa input na yun is value. So, kung ano yung tinipe natin dun sa search bar, okay, yun yung magiging value ng input natin. Okay? So, that's why i-access natin yung um, input value. Okay? And then, store natin siya. Okay? Um, okay, store natin siya sa variable na input. Okay? But hindi natin dineclare input. So, declare natin dito input. Yan. So, next is, so after natin store yung value ng search bar. So, ano ba yung value ng search bar? Kung ano yung tinipe natin doon sa search bar, yun yung magiging value ng input natin. So, yung store natin siya sa variable na input. And then, ang gagawin natin is, uh, basically, so input, value. Okay, yung input na yun, no? okay, i-co-convert natin siya into uppercase. Kasi pwedeng ang, ang i-search uh, ng user is puro naka-lowercase, okay, or puro naka-uppercase, no? para ma-limit natin yung error na hindi niya nasa search yung yung products kasi uh, key sensitive yung pag-search no, sa input. Gagawin natin is automatic i-convert natin yung lahat ng value ng input into uppercase. Okay? And then we're going to uh, store that to the variable called input value. Then next is okay, gagawin natin is uh, we're going to access no, using that query selector yung Okay. Element na merong class na card. Okay? So, i-access natin yung mga element. So, basically, ito yun. Okay, ito yung, ang hinahanap niya is ito. Itong class na to. So, i-access niya yung element na yan, tsaka yung mga nasa loob niya. Okay? And then, store natin siya sa variable called cards. So, this is query selector all. So, meaning, lahat ng element na merong class na, dot, na card, okay, store na yon into array, gagawin niya array yon okay? So, it's an array of uh, card element, and then, store natin siya sa variable called cards, okay? And then, we're going to uh, use for loop ulit, okay? So, for var, i, so, magkakaroon tayo initial variable, if i is less than cards that length, okay? So, kung ilan man yung uh, products natin, no? cards that length, ilan yung pinapakita ng website or ng browser, okay? Na, na products, okay? We're going to i plus plus, and then ito yung laman ng code. Uh, parent div, Parent div is equals to cards i, okay, that parent node, okay. So, ano ba itong parent node? Ito yung uh, parent element. So, kung yung card natin, okay, sa HTML file, ito ba nandito yung card na yan? Yung parent node, ang tinutukoy niyan is itong element na to. Okay? So, or yung mas higher sa kanya na na uh, element. Okay? Na div element. Okay? So, we're going to access yung parent node niya. Okay? So, nalagay, maglalagay tayo ng condition statement. If uh, cards i dot id So, yung id niya is ito. Okay? Yan yung product name. 
Okay? So, in-assign na natin yung ID of each card ng product name, no? If that ID, okay, to uppercase, that index of, so index of is, is actually a, a method wherein uh, nire-return niya yung index number, okay, dun sa array. Okay? So, uh, ano ba yung index number nitong nila ilalagay natin na value? So, for example, ang nilagay natin na value nito is input value. So, yung input value, remember, ang input value is yung tinipe mo na value sa search bar. So, ngayon, iti-check ngayon ni index of kung saan dun sa array yung uh, matching word ng input value. Kung namarin, nasa array, uh, sa index 0. So, i-return niya dito is index 0. Okay? So, ang, ang nire-return nito is yung index number nung value dun sa array. Okay? So, for example, ang tinipe natin sa input value sa search bar is AirPods. AirPods. Ngayon, i-check nyo yun ni index of dun sa array of cards. Okay? Saan dun sa array yung merong AirPods na ID? So, we're accessing the ID. Okay? So, kung ang AirPods is nasa second array, nasa second index, ang re-return nito is index 1. Okay? Ang re-return niya is index 1. Okay? So, since hindi natin alam kung ano yung ilalagay na na key, na key or na, na value ng user, that's why in-store natin yung value dun sa variable na input value. Okay? If uh, this Cards ID that to uppercase that index of is, kung ang uh, re-return nito is uh, greater than negative 1. Okay? So, basically, ang re-return lang ng index of is from 0, okay, up to kung ilan man yung... So, meaning, kapag nandun kapag ang index na uh, index na ni-return sa is 0, ibig sabihin nandoon siya sa array. Pero kapag nag-search ka, okay, ng uh, products na wala doon sa array mo, ang ire-return lagi sa iyo ng index of is negative 1. Ibig sabihin wala siya sa list of array mo. Okay? So kapag negative 1 ang ni-return niya sa iyo, wala siya dun sa list of array. Wala yung kinifurch mo ng product. Pero kapag ang, ang nireturn sa'yo na index number is greater than negative 1, pwede 0, pwede 1, pwede 2, ibig sabihin nandun siya sa list of array mo. Okay? If ang nireturn sa'yo na index is greater than negative 1, ibig sabihin nasa list of array mo siya. Ang gagawin natin is parent div that style that display okay? equals to empty. Okay? Empty, ano na siya? Empty value. Okay? So, basically, parang wala lang tayong gagawin. Okay? Ang in-access natin is style.display. Nilalagay natin ng uh, attribute na uh, display value yung parent node na yun, yung div element. Since nandun siya sa uh, list of array, okay, dapat ipapakita niya. Now, since na nasa for loop tayo, no, kapag ang nilagay natin, kapag ang sinurch ng user is, for example, AirPods. So, for example, ito yung input value, AirPods. So, this a first loop. Okay? Ano ba yung first loop natin? Ang index yan is zero, di ba? So, yung first loop natin, ang nasa uh, products natin is Apple Watch. So, ano mangyayari? Okay? Since hindi na niya mamimit itong condition na to, okay, maglalagay tayo ng else condition. So kapag hindi niya namit yung condition, ibig sabihin ang return niya is negative 1, okay, or less than 0, okay, ang gagawin natin dun sa card na yun, okay, is uh, maglalagay tayo ng display value na man. Ibig sabihin ng none is hindi niya ipapakita sa website. Okay? Tama naman. Kasi kapag 
hindi naman yun yung nilagay mong uh, key, keyword dun sa search bar, dapat hindi yun yung papakita ka sa'yo. Okay? So, balik natin yan. And then, balik din natin to, to input value. Yan. So, yung first loop, kung ang kinipe mo dyan is AirPods, yung first loop, okay, hindi ito inahanap mo. So, ang gagawin niya is i-hide niya to. So, yung display ng card na to is set na to none. Second loop, ito yun, matching. So, wala siyang gagawin. Bibigyan ka lang niya ng empty uh, display value. And then, yung third loop, hindi ulit match yan. So, ang gagawin niya is i-hide niya ulit tong card na to. So, ipapakita niya, ang ititara niya dito is yung product na match dun sa keyword na nilagay mo. Okay? So, going back here. Yan. So, that's why in-iterate ulit natin yung cards uh, uh, na array. Okay? Yan. Okay. So, meron tayong function. Pero hindi... Now, to use this function, no, kailangan natin bumalik sa HTML file. Okay? So, dito natin ilalagay yung uh, function. So, saan natin siya ilalagay? Dito natin siya ilalagay sa button. Okay? Itong button na to is, ito yan. Itong button na yan. So, kapag nag-type tayo ng uh, value dito sa search bar, kapag kinunit natin to, kukunin niya yung value na to. Okay? And then, tatawagin natin yung function na filter products. Okay? Then, tsaka na mag yung code or yung logic na nilagay natin inside the function. So, dito sa function na to, 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 to use yung JavaScript function, we're going to use an attribute called onClick. Okay? Ibig sabihin na onClick, kapag kinlik mo yung button, okay, tatawagin natin yung filter products na, okay, um, function. Okay? So, dapat meron siyang open close parenthesis. Then, ipapasa lang natin yung event. Kasi dun sa JavaScript file, no, kailangan meron tayong parameter na event. Kung mag-take siya ng parameter na event. Para ma-prevent natin yung pag-send ng data, okay? Pa para ma-prevent ma natin yung pag-send ng data. Okay? And then, gagana na yung uh, function event. Okay? So, save natin yan. So, we, uh, ginamit, kumamit na tayo ng on-click attributes and then, ginamit natin yung filter products na function. Save natin and then make sure naka-save din yung um, JavaScript file natin. Then kapag ni-refresh natin itong uh, website natin. And then let's try to search for AirPods and then hit the search button. So dapat ang ipapakita nila sa iyo is yung card okay, nung product na AirPods. So refresh ulit natin then let's try watch. Okay. So, ipapakita na lang yung Apple Watch. And then, shut natin. Macbook. So, let's say lowercase. Yan. So, since na meron tayong logic na i-convert nyo itong nilagay natin na value into uppercase, no? And then, um, meron din tayong logic na kino-convert natin yung ID name no to uppercase so dapat magmatch sila so kahit lowercase ang ilagay natin dito or uppercase no ipap isa search na pa rin and if we filter na pa rin yung yung uh, value okay and yung list of arrays okay or list of products na meron tayo sa website okay so fresh yan so kumagana na yung ating search product okay so, that's for this session. So, una natin, recap lang tayo, no? Nating ginawa is, uh, instead of manually, uh, or or instead of manually hard coding yung products natin, no? Dun sa HTML file natin. So, gumamit tayo ng uh, object, and then in iterate natin siya sa JavaScript file natin. Then, in-access natin yung products, uh, yung properties ng mga products. Okay? So, instead of repeating this uh, three times, okay, okay gumawa lang tayo ng logic na uh, nag-for loop lang tayo. 
yung gumamit tayo ng for loop. So, in iterate lang natin siya so that we can access yung mga products no using this logic or this code. And then, next is, nilagyan natin ng interaction yung uh, button natin na add to cart. So that kapag kinilik siya, okay, madi-disable siya and dalabas yung text na added. So, gumamit ulit tayo ng for loop and nag-add tayo ng event listener. So, for every click, okay, pinalitan natin yung uh, text ng button to add it and disable natin yung uh, style niya. Okay? And then, lastly, is yung for the search bar. No? So, kung gumawa tayo ng function wherein yung value Okay? Nang nilagay natin dito, okay? So, tinik natin yung value na yan. Then, once na kinilik natin yung search button, okay? If you filter ngayon yan itong function na to, okay, based dun sa list of array or list of products na meron tayo. So, kapag uh, nagmatch siya, okay? Yung display nun, ipapakita niya. Pero kapag hindi, i-hide na yung display or yung div element na yun, yung card. Right, so that ends no our my session for this uh, topic called creating an interactive website using JavaScript. I hope you, you learned a lot, and um, I recommend na uh, uh, you continue yung yung pag-aral o yung pag-learn ng JavaScript. So there's a lot na pwede, pwede mong gawin. No? There's a lot that you can do. No. Uh, using JavaScript. So, you can create a website, a game, okay? a web application. Okay? Um, and then, from there, no, pwede, ka, pwede, pwede may continue yung, yung, yung pag uh, uh, create ng website using other JavaScript frame, frameworks naman. Okay? So, that's it. No? Uh, thank you for listening and see you on our next sessions. Thank you. Nag-enjoy ba kayo? Marami ba kayong natutunan? Ano ang pinaka nagustuhan ninyo sa session? Comment below your answer and the most creative answer will win the limited everyone can coach you. And to get your e-certificate and know more about our training offerings, simply scan the QR code. See you again on our next session. Bye!